Thank you again for clicking on my face. I love you and appreciate you for that. And before I talk about a movie that's actually a pretty anticipated one for me, not gonna lie, I do want to thank the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Factor. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. With Factor's keto, calorie smart, chef's choice, vegan veggie options, 27 meals and 33 add-on options, they got your flavor. No hassle prepared foods. Make sure you always have something on hand, but you don't have time to think about a meal. Like I said before, I'm a creature of habit. I essentially eat the same meals, the same food day in, day out, every day. What can I say? It's my way. It doesn't mean I don't like changing it up. But I don't want to go through the arduous process of shop, prep, cooking. Factor meals arrive pre-prepared, ready in two minutes. Time being the true commodity of life, you can now take the time that would have been used for shopping, meal prep, cooking, and dedicate it two other things. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code johns50 to get yourself 50% off your first factor box and free wellness shots for life. Two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order while you're an active member. And thank you once again to factor for sponsoring this video. I do appreciate it. And now I love me a good space thriller, so let's get to it. operative word being good. So ISS stands for International Space Station because the film does take place on the International Space Station, a space station that actually exists in reality. Yes, astronauts from all sorts of countries come together to show that they can work together in space anyway. In the movie ISS, you have three American astronauts, three Russian cosmonauts. They're all getting along. They even profess in the film, hey, whatever's going on down there on Earth between our countries, that shit ends at the atmosphere. Then out the window, they see an absolute nuclear massacre break out. Enter the antitrust. From there on, it's like, yeah, we're totally friends, right? Uh-huh, keep an eye on them. And when the movie plays that up, that's when it's in the pocket. That's when it's most engaging. That's when it's living up to the quite frankly brilliant setup and premise of the entire film. Six people, two countries, one confined space, and one of those countries has apparently pushed the button. And I want to emphasize for the first half of the movie when it is playing up that antitrust, who do you trust, who do you not? Did the Russians get the same orders we got? You don't know. You'll see one of the Russians peek his head around a corner. You don't know if he's just being shady or if the movie's just kind of framing it that way. Maybe he was like, oh, oh, there's my juice box. You don't know, in a premise like this, a movie like this, this movie in particular, it's the lack of information that keeps you engaged. When you have no more or less information than the American astronauts have, so you kind of feel like you're in the same boat, that's when it's peak. That peak slowly rolls into a valley, however, because it almost feels like they accidentally did that. Like someone lost sight of the fact that that's what's making this film with that premise engaging. The thrill of not knowing, there's one scene in particular where something happens and the movie just kind of shows you who did that thing. Kind of felt like those YouTube shorts and Instagram videos that show you a magic trick, but the whole thing, the shtick behind it is they're showing you how the sleight of hand and magic tricks done. People love the dopamine rush of being in the know until they realize being in the know is compromising the magic of not knowing. From then on, it kind of devolves into what feels like a generic thriller. A thriller that felt like it was going to be such a unique cinematic experience. Just kind of turns into, yeah, feel like I've seen this before. Yeah, sure, maybe I saw it in a movie that didn't take place in space, so the framing was different. But I still walked away from this movie feeling like, well, meh. I felt like everyone in the movie did a good job. It's a cast of six people. Again, that's amazing. Everybody can shine, right? Well, there are a couple that stand out. Stand out for me is uh, Pillow Asbake or Asbeck. One of the two. Plot twist is neither. It's pronounced a third way. I don't know. I'm terrible with names. You know that. If you don't know that, now you do. Anyhow, we played Euron Greyjoy in Game of Thrones. I thought he was great casting for this. Because again, with the you don't know if you can trust this guy or not element and aspect, you know, it's like, I always bring this one up if I'm going to talk about a casting that clearly gave it away. Brad Dourif in Alien Resurrection, I guess that scientist was supposed to be like, ooh, is he good? Is he bad? We don't know. But you cast Brad Dourif in an Alien movie, so yeah, we knew he was going to be bad. Cat was out of the bag from the casting. This movie had good casting. You didn't know who to trust. My distrust of him came from Game of Thrones which is kind of unfair to the movie and the character, but I feel like that was the point. I mean, you have to think about that when casting a character in a movie like this. And I don't mind saying the last act of this movie kind of devolved into something cartoony. That's right, all that intrigue, out the airlock, we're now dealing with cartoonish characters. One scene in particular, jump the space shark. Not gonna tell you what it is, not gonna spoil anything. It didn't make sense, it didn't feel natural. It felt like someone was doing the math while they were filming. They were like, oh, 
um, well, we kind of want something else to happen and we don't have enough characters to fulfill it. Here we go. Here's the new scene. Great, and in about six and a half minutes, it doesn't even matter. It was sloppy and it felt like a waste of time. And the movie ends on, quite frankly, a very unfulfilling note. I didn't mind where the movie was heading for the ending, but where the movie actually ended, like cut to black, I was like, I... <laughs> that just felt like they didn't know what to do. I would say I can almost feel the theater moaning, but I actually heard some moans and I didn't disagree with them. Look, in the end, promising premise for ISS, that was evident in the trailer. But the contrast between potential and reality here is a solid parsec. This could have been, and I even make the argument should have been, Crimson Tide in Space. It's important to give credit where credit's due though, and I do give this movie its due credit. I feel like you can watch the first half of this movie, maybe two thirds of the movie, before the third act really kicks off. Just leave the movie theater, come up with your own head cannon, and that's how the movie ends. Man, I feel like when I left the movie theater, I liked it more than it sounded like I did. And then I turn on the camera, it just, it's just me bitching about the movie for a few minutes. Suppose I'm not gonna remember it in T minus one day. Yep. Already forgot. All right, so ISS, have you seen it? What did you think about it? What's your favorite, I guess we'll say claustrophobic thriller? That's not Alien. You, I mean, that ship was pretty big in the first Alien, but I guess it would still count. No cheating. If Alien's your first pick, what's your second? Whatever it is, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.